Om Shanti and a very good evening to all. Sister Margaret is mainly involved in many educational services and uh, also teaches training in Global Corporation House in London. And uh, she also works together with ORC, conducting training for teachers. So without further delay, let us welcome Sister Margaret for this evening's session. Over to you, Sister Margaret. Thank you very much for the, the warm welcome. And um, I'm glad I actually got online. <laughs> there was a moment where I thought, ooh. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's a very important topic um, for us as um, BKs. And, um, and I, I do believe that um, Baba also believes it to be a very important topic. And my own personal feeling is that Baba supports good sleep, but there's many things that affect sleep. And um, maybe today we'll look at, um, and there's many things that are affected by not having sleep as well. So I think in this, in this um, whole subject, we have to keep some kind of balance. That's the really important thing. And this topic, I became interested in this topic many years ago, and actually it's one of the topics that I do professionally. And so over the time, because I was doing it professionally, I, I anytime there was something on sleep, I would you know, cut it out and keep it and um, think about it. And of course, Baba talks about sleep as well. So um, really what, what I thought would be good tonight, or this, this night for you, it's nice <laughs> midday for me, um, is to think about um, sleep. And I'm talking about sleep here for the average person who, who does sleep. I'm not gonna cover um, things like, there are some medical conditions that sleep, like insomnia, it is, it is a medical condition, as is um, uh, narcolepsy, narcolepsy um, sleep apnea. These are medical conditions, and the, if these are your medical conditions, you need to get medical treatment for them. And actually, this soul has slight narcolepsy. So that's another area that's another interest for me because um you know i noticed that i could sort of fall asleep really easily and i think many bks do and it's not because they're not good brahmins there might be some condition they have and they struggle so and there's ways of managing it as well so but this tonight isn't really um about that um it's more about the person who can get to sleep, but maybe the quality of their sleep's not good or they're, they're bothered like, oh, I'm not getting up at two o'clock in the morning, this, this kind of thing. It's like for BKs really. So tonight we're gonna look at um, um, the physic, some of the physical factors, some of the mental, emotional, and of course spiritual we have to look at too, and how we might uh, manage our sleep better really. And um, but first we have to kind of think about what is sleep. And I've got some slides that will just run through. There's not too many of them, just run through quickly so we get an idea of sleep because we, we do it every night, 365 days a year. So it's really not worth knowing what is really happening then. And, you know, every, every night you get a chance to practice something. <laughs> you know, you can't... You know, if you came to a course on basket weaving, you can make a choice whether you do it or not. But sleep, you don't have a choice. So you might as well learn about it and do and do your best to keep improving your sleep patterns. So let me just go. Uh, I think I'm probably co-host now. Um, yeah, let me just get this up. One second. So, you know, ultimately we want this, don't we? We want to go to sleep kind of happy, 
just doze off naturally and wake up naturally. That would be the ultimate where, where, where you you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually feel you've had a good sleep. That's what that's what we're aiming for. Um, but that does take quite a bit of care to to get to that point. Um, so let's have a look at sleep. So I'm hoping I'm not speaking too fast for the translation. So Usha, you can you can signal Usha and she can sort of go like this if I need to slow down. Yeah, yes, you know. Hmm? Am I going too fast? Uh, I'll just check with the translators if they're okay, then I think you're going good. I'll just, I'll, I'll just let you know in a while. You can okay. go ahead. So for those in English, you can, can read this. So while, while you're resting, actually, mostly we go to sleep. We don't really think about it. We go to sleep after the day. And then the next thing we know is that we wake up. And some of us maybe wake up in the night and then go back to sleep again. So, but actually while we're sleeping, a lot is happening. A lot is happening on a biological level on even on a kind of mental psychological level, a lot is happening. And the thing is that if we don't get proper sleep, then it's like expecting the body to function when it's not being recharged enough. It's like, we know what it's like when the soul's not recharged we go back into old patterns, more likely to come up. So actually, you know, when we sleep, um, a lot is happening on the physical level. We can call it restorative sleep. So, you know, the, the, all the inner organs of the body are being kind of rejuvenated during that time. And that's important for us to understand and know about. And, um, and the research says that um, there's about 1% of the population in the world that can manage on four hours sleep, 1%. And our mama and baba could have been in that 1%. So we have to consider that. There is 1% who naturally four hours sleep will be adequate. But there's also in history, in recent history, people who boasted about being able to have four hours sleep and then later in life got mental illnesses. So we have to really kind of keep a balance here, yeah? So in a way it's saying, the research saying that you can't, you can't function as well if you haven't had uh, adequate sleep. So here it's saying, you know, to work, to learn, to create, to communicate at your, at your true potential, which is what we want to do if you haven't had enough sleep. And I think all of us have had the experience that some of the old sanskaras start to creep in if we haven't had enough sleep. I think we might have all noticed that. <laughs> so we can have a little um, discussion. So what is the sleep cycle? There is a, a sleep cycle that goes on um, and it goes on a few times in your night. So, so basically there's a whole 24 hour sleep wake cycle and they call it the cocardian rhythm. And you know, this is the time when you're awake and when you're asleep. And there is a hormone called melatonin, which makes you sleepy. Now, some people lack melatonin, so they find it really hard to, to sleep. So like souls who have insomnia, it might be that, that physically the melatonin doesn't function as well. But the normal thing is that, you know, the, the, as it gets to nighttime, the melatonin kicks in and, and then we start to, to feel sleepy. And then in the morning, the melatonin is, the production of melatonin is inhibited. So then we more awake. So um, that would be a kind of natural cycle. And then within that 24 hour cycle, within the sleep cycle, there's some cycles. So, you know, Baba says everything is cycles. Everything in, this, in the world is cycle, cyclic. So hang on, let's go back. So let's first hear it. Here, you may know some of these on the list, you may not, but so it's saying you may be sleep deprived. You may be sleep deprived if you need an alarm clock in order to wake up on time. You rely on the snooze button, which means that you wake up, but you push that button down again because <laughs> you can't get out. And you're, you're, you're kind of groggy. 
you're groggy when you're getting out of bed, you know, it's, it's not your best time. Um, feel sluggish in the afternoons. Many BKs are having quite long afternoon naps. So, um, or we're in meetings or lectures or merely fall in sleep. So I think I'm not saying, I think all of us have gone through this um, after eating or when driving. And in fact, one of the reasons that I really got interested in this because there was one time when I was driving, luckily I was, I, just, I fell asleep at the wheel just for a second, to maybe, and I could feel the car moving and I woke up and I just, as soon as I could, I got off that road and I, I had to sleep. And, but that kind of alerted to me something wasn't right. And that's when I found I had narcolepsy. And narcolepsy, not going to go into the big detail, but it's not like you suddenly feel tired. Like the normal is you start to feel tired. Maybe you yawn, maybe you rub your eyes, you know. Narcolepsy, you can be wake then sleep, nothing in between. So it's quite serious, <laughs> it could be quite serious. And some BKs, they're awake, they're gone, you know. So you need a nap to get through the day. I think many of us fall asleep while watching TV. We may not be doing that, but maybe when we're on the computer or, you know, as soon as we sit down, we fall asleep. Or even we sit to meditate, we fall asleep. And then we're trying to catch up on the weekends or, you know, fall asleep within five minutes of going to bed. That might be quite a good thing, but sometimes if you're sleep deprived, you don't go through the natural process. You've gone, you've kind of, you're try, your body's trying to catch up and that's why you're going to sleep quickly, but it doesn't mean you're having good sleep. So um, that last one is a bit debatable, really. The effects of sleep deprivation, and this is this is quite scary material, really. <laughs> so, you know, the first one is fatigue, lethargy, lack of motivation. And sometimes in Brahman life, we might go through phases we don't feel so motivated, even though we're getting the highest knowledge, the highest inspiration, and it might be just you're sleep deprived. Moodiness or irritability. Okay, you might have certain sanskaras, we may be in tricky situations, but it could be just lack of sleep. Um, reduced creativity, problem solving skills. You know, you just can't, you're not coping so well with what's coming at you. Whereas when you're firing what they call on all four cylinders, you know, you just, you can deal with things. But here you're just, you know, it's like, it would just take one straw to break the camel's back kind of thing. You'll just flip out or something really, really minor. But here's a big one. Um, reduced immunity, frequent colds, infections, concentration and memory loss. You know, and I'll talk a little bit more about that memory problems because that's quite a significant thing. Um, weight gain. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, impaired motor skills and increased risk of accidents. If we're not getting enough sleep. So you might notice you bump into things more, you, you cut your fingers more, you know what I mean? It's just little things. Um, your decision-making pro processes jeopardize. But also here, a big one is um, increased risk of diabetes, heart disease and other health problems, which is when it starts to get more serious. You know, so. It's good to know that, um, you know, it, it's it's a, it's a kind of balancing act. So there's sleep cycles, and there's two main types of sleep, and one is called non-REM sleep, and REM just means rapid eye movement. So there's non-REM sleep, and there's four stages of that, and they that. Those are cover the starting point going into the deep sleep. And then there's something called REM, which is rapid eye movement. And this is when you're more likely to be in a dream state. So in a way, the non-REM sleep more looks after the, fun the restorative function of your body and the organs. And that's why deep sleep is important. And the REM sleep is important more for um sorting out your memories your memories and your psyche so you could say that non-rem sleep is more for the physical body and the rem is more for 
the, the, the brain and the mind. Um, although the brain would be both. I'm very happy to um, send the slides after, so don't feel you've got to massively write everything down. You just send me an email, or Usher or um, Sham can send me an email and I can always send it to you. So don't feel pressured to write everything down. So in the non-REM sleep, this is where we go into a, the stages into the deeper sleep. The first one is relaxed wakefulness. And this is when you get into bed and you're you're getting comfortable, you're snuggling up under the duvet, you're, you're in a way you're, for a BK, this would be the stage where you're laying your body down and you're moving more into that point awareness. You're bringing your energy up to the forehead, to the point awareness, and you're starting to um, kind of say your last good night to the day and to Baba and you're, you're aware of that you're not the body at all and you're that point of light and you're going to go to Baba in the subtle regions. <laughs> so this, this relax, that's why if you fall off to sleep too quickly, you don't get a chance to kind of in a way disengage from the body, which is a very important practice for us as BKs to disengage from the, the body at night. And that will also have a big effect on how much sleep you need. So then, and then in a way the body takes over, right? Uh, and the brain and the body take over. So then you're within about five minutes, everything starts to slow down. You're starting to lose awareness of your surroundings. But if an ambulance went by or someone knocked at your door, you'd wake up, you know, um, or, you know, a dog starts barking. In that stage two, you'd probably still wake up. Um, and then when we go into stage three, it's like you're really starting to slip into to sleep and, you know, the heart rate goes down, the body temperature decreases, the eye movements stop. And this is why you do need some cover on you because your body temperature is going to drop. So you want to feel cozy when you go to sleep but and warm because there's going to be a point your body drops, temperature drops. And then, you know, the fourth stage of sleep and see how it's, you know, there's, it takes a bit to get there is the really, really important because this is um, when everything starts to happen. So at this point, it would be difficult to awaken someone. And this is when you go into the room and you're calling their name and they won't hear you, they won't wake up. And you'd probably, if you really had to wake them up, you'd probably have to shake them. Um, and no one likes that <laughs> because you're coming out of a deep sleep. So basically the blood is now flowing directed away from the brain and that's, there's a good reason for that. And it's going into the muscles and it's restoring the physical energy, the organs, the tissues, the muscles, everything is getting rejuvenated through deep sleep. Everything on the physical level is getting deep sleep. And even in this stage, your brain, your brain, because the only time, because your brain is so functional during the day, the only time when it has a chance to really clear out the toxins is when you're sleeping. It can't happen during the day. It's a bit like, it's a bit do, like doing your housework. You know, you're working all week and you ca catch up on your housework on the weekend. It's the same thing. The brain can only clear out at that time. And that's why, Sometimes if you haven't had enough sleep, you might wake up and you have red eye or you feel groggy or you, you know, you, you feel like you're in a fog because <laughs> you, because you haven't had enough sleep. So let's go to the next slide. Not too many more slides. So then there's this dream, dream REM sleep, which is called the dream sleep. And this happens, you know, it, it, the average is 70 to 90 minutes after falling asleep. And then, and then the eyes are different. The eyes are moving a lot and the breathing is shallow and the heart rate and the blood increase and the arms and legs are completely paralyzed, but the mind is, the mind's going. And this is the sleep that restores the mind, restores the mind. And it's, it's important because it's taking the short-term memory into the long-term memory. 
And this is another really important thing to understand that if we don't get enough sleep, we're not taking those memories into the long-term memory. And then if that's not happening, then you'll look back at your life and you won't be able to really remember things so well because it hasn't been had a chance to, shall we say, crystallize in your psyche. And this is the last slide and, you know, and it shows you through the different stages of relaxed wakefulness, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Um, so relaxed, relaxed, wait, relaxed wakefulness is like stage one in the, in, in the way I describe it, one, two, three, and stage three here would be our, what I've said, stage four, and that's the delta waves. And why this is quite interesting for meditators is that, you know, some of our daddies were able to get to delta waves in meditation. Like uh, specifically Daddy Janky, uh, that's what I know about, is that she was hitting these delta waves in deep meditation. So uh, of course, if a, if a soul is reaching some deep levels of meditation and getting delta waves, they will need less sleep because they're, they're, they're reaching the equivalent of deep sleep. You see what I mean? I hope that makes sense. But many of us are not in our meditation reaching delta waves because we're not having... So I guess when Baba talks maybe about the fire of yoga and you're up in that, you know, you're up in the soul world, you're really in that point form, you're really in Baba's energy, you're really in that fire of yoga. It's probably that kind of meditation, what they call the volcanic yoga. And if you're having lots of that, you know, then what Baba's saying will all start to make sense. So I'm just gonna come out of there and that's, um, that's the end of the slideshow. But as I said, you're I'm welcome to have, have those sent to you. And I also have handouts on sleep if you're, if you're interested. So there's a couple of things that in a way that like tips and tools really from now on. Um, how am I doing for time? I've got more time, haven't I? Yeah. Yes, sister. Another half an hour, yeah. So let's just go through the physical, the emotional, the mental, and, and the spiritual. And these are kind of, um, these are the bits that you might want to write down because um, they're not on the PowerPoint. So physical things. So this is from my own experience and observing others. We could start with this uh, quote that came to me many years ago when I was doing my research. And this was, sleep affects all your life. And all your life affects sleep. I'll repeat that. Sleep affects all your life and all your life affects sleep. So it's a cycle, it's cyclic. And if you're not paying attention to what you're doing in the day, it is gonna affect your sleep. And if you're not paying attention to your sleep, it's gonna affect your day. So we can't escape <laughs> in a way. We have to start doing it better on all levels. So here's some, here's some from my own experience. So some pra very practical things on a physical level. The food you eat has a big effect on your mind and it has a big effect on your sleep. The more alkaline your food is, the more likely you are to have better sleep. And the alkaline food are things like fruit, vegetables, and I'm not talking about overcooked vegetables, I'm talking about raw vegetables, slightly cooked vegetables. The more acid food, sugar, oil, 
where she deep fried rice. They're not so bad, but you can see what I'm saying. So the diet that you have will have a lot of effect on your sleep. So it can be quite cultural, our diet. And a worthy experiment is to have a week where you don't eat anything from your culture. <laughs> so if you're used to having, say, a Gujarati diet, have a week where you eat raw food, or you eat just steamed, or you eat fruit or whatever, and just see the effect. You won't know unless you experiment. And the yogi life is an exper experiential life. But the food that you eat is highly, effect highly affects your mind and your sleep. So if you're not sleeping well, and sleeping well, we'll look at what that is in a minute, but if you're not sleeping well, have a good look at your diet. And maybe a few changes in your diet. And also when you eat, you know there's this phrase, eat breakfast like a king, eat lunch like a queen, eat supper like a pauper, yeah? So enjoy your breakfast, break the fast, break the fast. Enjoy your breakfast, have some lunch, but evening meal, Try and make it little and early as you can. I mean, some of you may work, so you have to think. If you work, you know, how do you get your main meal at lunchtime? It might not be so easy, but, you know, if you work with that principle, you're more likely. And the earlier you eat, the better. You know, if you can eat by six o'clock, it's so much better for you. It's going to have a, you know, good effect on your sleep. And also, even at lunchtime, to eat light. You know, there's something not quite right if we're having a meal at lunchtime and then we're just desperate to go to bed. Food should give you life, not make you heavy. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave you to, to think about that. Food is there to make you feel alive, not to make you feel sleepy. And if you're feeling very sleepy after you eat, you need to think, why? Yeah. Um, water. Water is so important for the body. But of course, if you drink it too late in the evening, there's, you know, you're going to wake up, aren't you? And, I, and so if you think about when you get up in the morning, like even before Amrit Vela, drink some water, warm water, not cold water. Cold, cold water is not good for your body. Warm water is the best. And if you can get mineralized or you put some Tulsi drops in it, best purifier is Tulsi drops. So, you know, if you start early in the morning, so before I even go to class, I've already had one liter. And then before lunchtime, I've had another liter. So I've already got my two liters in. And then I'm having less, 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 less. But they say to have a little bit of really quite warm water before you go to sleep, you're less likely to get heart attacks and strokes. So a little bit, just a little bit of quite warm water, not boiling, but quite warm, you know, above lukewarm, just before you go to sleep. But you need to start early in the day to get, because your, because your body needs quite a lot of water and it also detoxes. Um, of course, um, none of us are really doing the kind of TV stuff like that, but, um, even um, the social media things and the, the laptops and the computer stuff, really an hour before you, you go to sleep, cut it all out. And a big, big advice, I went one time when I was running the course professionally and there was someone, there was someone come to the course and he said, I came because I, I'm really, really struggling with sleep. I'm really struggling. And he was from an IT background. And I said, where do you charge your, where's all your, you know, your computer equipment? And he said, in the bedroom. He said, I've got some in the lounge, but a lot of it's in the bedroom. And I said to him, get it all out. Don't even wake up to your phone. Don't use your phone as an alarm clock. Get a proper old alarm clock. So he moved it all out of 
his room, all, all the charging of the thing, he did it in the lounge, way away from, as far away from the bedroom as he could. And he wrote to me after two weeks, he said, I'm having two hours longer sleep. I'm so grateful. So it's very common, especially for those in younger bodies to wake up to their phone. Don't do it. Cut down on this blue light, get an old alarm. I got three, Sister Genty came to my, our house because I live at Tennyson Road. And she said, Margaret, you've got three clocks in your room. <laughs> They're all kind of analog clocks or, you know, digital. I said, yeah, one is just my normal clock that I look at where I can see from any angle of the room. One of them is my Amrit Vela clock. So I just press the top and it's already set for Amrit Vela the next day. And then there's my other little clock that's travel clock or nap clock or whatever it is. And she said, okay. <laughs> I'm not like a time freak, but you know, but I don't have, I, I never use my um, mobile for, for alarm clock, unless I've gone somewhere and forgotten to bring a clock, but yeah, no, no good. <laughs> Stop that immediately. <laughs> the other thing that has a big effect on, on um, physically is exercise. So to go out for a walk, because when you go out for a walk, you get three things. You get exercise, you get air, which is so important, and you get light. So you're getting three in one. And if you can jog a little bit and get your heart rate up, even better. But even no matter what age you are, get out there and walk, even if it's with a stick, because you're getting three in one. Even if you do a treadmill in a gym, you're not getting, you're not getting the light and you're not getting the air. So walking, we are made to walk. Our bodies are made to walk. We're not made to be sitting all the time. So, you know, and, and this will affect the, the melatonin level. The more you get out in daylight, it, it, it really helps that bring back that balance of melatonin because we've, uh, overridden, we've overridden the melatonin balance because we have lights on at night. You know, since the electric light bulb, we've we've come out of nature in a way. So, but to get out in the day in the light, and even if it looks overcast, don't worry, you're getting light. So that's a really important thing. So really, the hour before we go to bed or go to sleep, we need to start down, coming down coming down. So that that's really the physical just there's probably more tips but those are kind of the main the main tips. So food, water, exercise, less blue light which is from computers and things. So the hour before you go to bed come off all electronic stuff. You owe it to yourself. Nothing is that important. So how do I feel when I'm at my best? So let's just have a moment to just have a little thought. What do I feel like when I am at my best? So I think for most of us, you know, when we're at our best, we're exactly what Baba wants us to be. You know, when we've had a good night's sleep, we wake up refreshed, we're enthusiastic, we're motivated, much more easy to be soul conscious. We're very grateful for life, grateful for that, but what Baba's giving us. We want to study. We, we want to be engaged in things. So, you know, when we're at our best, you know, we meet what Baba wants. And when we're sluggish and, you know, falling asleep, we can't feel so good. So emotional. 
again, whatever's going on in our life is going to have an effect. What's ever going on in our life emotionally was, is going to have an effect on our life. So, you know, if we're in a big karmic account and we're settling that account and we're having waste thinking or negative thinking, it all has an effect on our body and uh, consequently on our sleep. And this is why, you know, Baba has given us a very beautiful method to, um, you know, during the day to do the traffic controls with sincerity because it, it stops the accumulation. We can start checking on that hour. Maybe we do the five forms that Baba's given us or we take ourselves out of the drama to the soul world. We get a different perspective. We think, how would Baba be seeing my day? How would... Baba like my day to be um because if we're still allowing all these old patterns to keep going they they have a big effect on our our emotions and our mind and um it will have an effect it'll be playing out in our sleep and I think we've all had times where we haven't we haven't offloaded before we went to bed and we go to bed and we're waking up with the same issue, thinking about the same soul and how irritating they are or whatever. So, you know, Baba's given us methods. He's given us obviously Amrit Vela. We want good Amrit Velas. We, we want, we, the Murli class is important, but also to take something from the Murli and think about it. And, um, and also to, to do our best to be soul conscious. I mean, that is the crux of this. Our life is soul consciousness. Um, I'll come on to the questions in a bit. Someone's put a question, but Usha can manage the questions a bit later. I'll just do my little talk and there's actually time for questions. So, you know, if we're not doing our best to, to sort it out, then, um, then it, it has an effect on our sleep. And in a way, the whatever you take into sleep is really highly important because in your sleep, your, your subconscious becomes more active. And when your subconscious becomes more active, it's affecting these deep sanskaras. So, you know, Baba, ha Baba has said, and a lot of the seniors say, you know, read a bit of Aviak Murli before you go to sleep. And I have about three books I read. That's why I have to start going to bed early because, you know, if you're going to do, if you're going to have some meditation before you go to sleep, you're going to do your chart, you're going to read something. It takes some time. You can't just arrive in the bedroom and that's it, you know, and think it's all going to happen. You have to allow that time. And that's why I think an hour before you go to sleep, you need to be starting to head that head in that direction. So to go and have your meditation and, you know, clear out, clear out with Baba anything that's understanding. But I think also writing is a really good way because writing moves it from up here onto a page. It moves it from being subjective to objective. And about 10, 10 or 12 years ago, um, there was a big emotional thing in my life. You know, it wasn't, luckily it wasn't so much from the BK family. It was, um, you know, within about um, a space of six months, someone came back in my life who I hadn't seen for 30 years. And then after six months, someone I hadn't seen for 20 years. And with them, they brought a kind of upheaval in a way of things that I hadn't sorted out at the time. I hadn't, because I didn't know how to at that time. And so a, there was a lot going on emotionally and a lot going on in my mind, although on the outside, I was quite functional, but internally, and I did a lot of writing during that time. You know, I'd say, dear Baba, Om Shanti, and I would just write and write and write and write. And um, I, I just saw how, when I look back at those books, I haven't kept them now because it's like a past thing, but um, at the time I looked back and it wasn't just about the situation. It was, I was seeing how the knowledge was weaving through what I was writing. And that was a beautiful thing to see because I thought it was all the stuff in my head, but actually I could see how Baba and the knowledge were helping to work it out. So, um, and, and I think it saved me because I still saw that my sleep patterns changed, but I think the writing really, really helped, really helped. So, you know, we, we need the meditation, but writing is such a fantastic thing. 
um, before you go to sleep. And some people do like a chart where they do their percentages. And for some souls, um, writing is probably better. They, they, you know, I was never great at maths. I, I, I wouldn't be able to work out the percentages. <laughs> writing is you know it, it to me writing becomes more honest it's just from right from my heart to baba whatever's going on and um and i feel baba really appreciates it and then you know i feel like i've told baba now i'm i'm aiming to work on whatever came up and then full stop turning the page for a new day and and then you know remembering baba before you go to sleep but I, I tend to I've got three things on the go reading you know like I might read something like of Daddy Janky's book or I might read a little meditation and then by always finish with Baba's words Avi Akhtamoli or Sakar Moli so my last thing that goes in before I go to sleep has to be direct from God through Brahma Baba and I think that's really, really important because that's then what's going to go into your psyche. And they say that the first 10 minutes when you wake up is your prime time. It's your prime time. So we don't want to be waking up and thinking, oh, no, I've got to get up. No, oh, no, it's not 3.30 already. You don't know. You want to be waking up and think, I am an almighty authority. I'm becoming a master of the world. Baba loves me intensely. I love Baba intensely. Good morning, Baba. This is what our first 10 minutes has to be. It has to be full of Gyan and self-respect. But it's very affected by what you take into your sleep. And, and if we work on the last hour before we go to sleep and those first 10 minutes and get them really powerful, that will change your life. And I've noticed that when I really pay attention to that, life starts to flow differently. And when I start losing attention to that, I can see a big difference. Um, so so these, that's what I'm going to say about emotionally. Writing is brilliant, but also what you take in, what you're taking in before you go to sleep, highly important. So we want it to be the highest spiritual possible. Baba, Babdada, it's got to be, yeah, for us. Um, for, for souls who are not in Baba's world, you know, you can say to them, read something positive, something, you know, that's uh, positive thinking or something like that. But for us, it has to be, the last thing that goes into our thought has to be direct from God, it has to be. Um, so the mental, the mental, I would say, um, again, it's really important to, um, and very, again, again to do with writing away we have to clear out the clutter and if you think about the room that you're in and, and if you go into say any of the daddy's rooms there's nothing there there's the bed don't even know they've got an alarm clock probably someone else wakes them up but you know or they wake up naturally they, they basically got the bed and baba's picture that's it isn't it and that's a clue isn't it so to think about in the room, and, and you may be like me that I'm in a bavern or I'm, you know, I'm sharing and I've only got my room and I, I have a locket job. So I have to keep everything in the room, but it's so important to make sure it's tidy, it's organized, you know, regularly declutter, regularly declutter. And if there's something that you're not using, you haven't used it for two years. And if you haven't used it in lockdown, unlikely that you're going to use it I mean I'm I'm not saying that you might have clothes locket clothes you've got to have when you go out sure but if you've been basically inside and you haven't used this thing I'm not if it's walking shoes I'm, just, I'm you know if it's outside stuff fine but if it's inside stuff and you haven't used it during like very unlikely you're going to use it the books that you've got there if you haven't done it in in lockdown you ain't going to do it right <laughs> Really, you're not, are you? So even the books, even Baba's books, always keep Aviat Molis. But you know, there might be book, there might be others who can benefit from the books that are just sitting in your cupboard. So regular clear out is really, really a good thing. And there's lots of new students come now who 
who maybe haven't got some of the old books, you know, some of them aren't available online anymore that may really benefit from these books that are just sitting on your shelf getting dust. And they're not, they're not achieving you anything. They're not achieving you anything where someone else reads it. You're going to get the benefit if they progress, right? So I think regular to keep things always tidy and under your bed, bed linen's fine, you know, but, and, and maybe some of Baba's books, if it's easier for you to, but don't, keep stuff that doesn't need to be there try and clear it out because you will sleep every time I've cleared out my room that night I sleep so well so well so keep the keep you keep your bedroom simple your house simple but definitely your bedroom stop thinking <laughs> that was daddy janky's favorite wasn't it there's a book stop thinking start living and uh, just the title gives us the clue doesn't it I think many of us overthink and I think Baba's encouraging us to trust him, trust drama. You don't really need to think too much. Drama has its own way. If we go with the drama, if we accept, it has its own way and it's working for our benefit. And I'm seeing this more and more and more. Just trust it. The drama knows what it's doing. Baba knows what, Baba knows what's the plan. The drama knows the plan. I've just got it to get in sync with the plan. And the plan might be different than I think it's going to be. So I have to stop the thinking and go with the plan, right? Because drama's got its plan, it's fixed. It's a fixed plan. And Baba's, Baba's supporting us, so we don't really need to think so much. And of course, if we're an overthinker, then what happens? We lie down for bed and it starts. So we have to... In our, in our life, in our daytime, think less, think less, think less, think less, think less. Accept, 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 trust, trust, trust. <laughs> Can you say, say how to trust? Yeah. Um, so I guess, again, the past, you know, there was a very lovely thing someone was showing about on a boat. If you stand at the back of a boat and there's behind, the, there's that bit coming out, it's called the wake. It's coming out, the water's coming out the back of the boat and it's called the wake. And that's a bit like your past. Your past is gone. And you're in the boat. Can your past drive the boat? Can the bit that's leaving the boat drive the boat? It can't. It's you in the boat that's driving the boat. And just think that Baba's sitting at the helm of your boat. So, you know, we can enjoy, we can enjoy the ride. And the more we're in the moment, accepting, trusting, then you start enjoying it. When you're in resistance to it, you don't like it, that person shouldn't be doing that. It just messes up your life. So spiritual, I guess for us, that's highly important. Um, so again, you know, it's very much to do with this hour before we go to sleep and how we live our life during the day. But, you know, Baba's given us, there's one Murli in the 1970s, near the end of the 1970s. And Baba actually talked about how we should live our life during the day. Um, tells us what to do for Amrit Vela, what to do during the day. What Every bit of the day, he tells us how we should be living it, which is, a great mood if you can find it. I know it's near the end of 1970. Um, so we're looking for, you know, being soul conscious, really. Um, and Baba filling our minds, Baba filling our life. And we all have our special relationship with Baba and that to nurture, to nurture that. Um, so I guess for the, um, the spiritual, you know more about that than anybody really, but it's so easy to get involved in service and not give enough time for self-service meditation. And, the, and it seems like Baba is giving us so much clue now that, that what the world really needs is us to have pure minds, pure minds that are filled with God's energy 
So whatever I can be doing to let go of my past, to be present, to, to come to keep increasing my level of purity, to get some time out of the day where I pull myself right out of the drama and I'm in the subtle region, the soul world. I'm starting to get Baba's, Shiv Baba's perspective on life. I'm getting Brahma Baba's perspective on life my life, the world, what's happening. I need to get myself out of the drama completely and really see it from beyond. So important um, to see who I really am. If, I'm, if I don't bring myself outside the drama, I don't really see myself purely as that soul. I'm not Margaret, I'm not the role, I'm not the things I do. I'm the soul, I belong to God. So we, building up that deep, deep, deep spiritual respect that I'm completely separate from the character in the drama. Completely. The character in the drama is something completely different from me. You know, and if I, if I don't pull myself out of the drama, then I could just be caught up in the character, trying to improve the character, trying to improve the life. And that, that's not what spirit, to me, spirituality is. But I did that for a long time. I was trying to improve Margaret. Oh my gosh, she's pretty fixed. She's a character. So we're not into character improvement. We're into soul empowerment. And to do the soul empowerment, you have to be outside the drama, subtle region, soul world. Or at least thinking of your golden age stage. Angel. So we even have to go beyond being Brahmin. Brahmin is for the task, for the service, for, but we have to be angel, incorporeal. And the last three words that Bra Brahma Baba spoke sums it up incorporeal, egoless, viceless. So all our spiritual endeavor has to be moving towards those last three words. He summed up the whole journey for us beautifully. But if we're not avidly practicing in corporeal stage, um, we'll get sucked in to the drama. And Baba's all the time telling us it's a graveyard, it's going to finish, it's going to be a haystack that's going to go on fire, it's a cartoon show, it's a Mickey Mouse. But some, still we get caught up, right? <laughs> so the effort to be beyond, be beyond. So the, the spiritual, and then really before we go to sleep to have some experience of being beyond. And as I said, when you lay that body down, you are laying your body down. You're grateful to the body for moving you around, for helping you perform elevated tasks. And then you're detaching completely from it. Thank you, point of light. And that's what you take into your sleep because you've done that hour of preparation. You've got spirituality in your mind, therefore it's easy to separate. And when you've done that, you will need less hours sleep. But still you have to aim. I would say aim for six hours. If you wake up before that, get up. Yeah. So make six hours your aim, but if you wake up five hours, get up, enjoy some extra amateur vela. So it might be that you can't do the two o'clock in the morning every night, but there'd be times when you do. And when you do, you really enjoy it. So this morning I woke up early, so I got up. And that's the challenge, isn't it? When you wake up, can you get up? Or is it too snug in there? <laughs> so that's really what I've got to share. I hope that's, uh, hope that's been helpful. Oh, just for one, one thing that um, Sister Genty said years ago, and I, I loved it, I put it in, I, I even share it when I do my professional courses. So she said for the journal or for, to help you journal or help you in your chart, um, we could have a whole session on charts, but looking at your day, 
there's three questions you ask yourself. What did I learn today? What did I notice in myself today? Could I have done any, anything differently? What did I learn today? What did I notice in myself today? And could I have done anything differently? And if so, what? And then you go back over that scene and you, you reframe it. So maybe you notice that you're a bit impatient in a situation. Then you go back to that situation and you rerun it in your mind, be impatient. And you notice what the difference is. And then that can be part of your writing. So over to Usha. Yes, thank you, Sister Margaret. It's beautiful. It's overwhelming, uh, whatever you said. I think for Brahman, sleep is such an important thing uh, that we all want to do and get better sleep and remember Baba only when we have good sleep. So there's a few things I took from your session just now and I really loved when you said sleep affects all your life and all your life affects sleep. And uh, of course, sister, you talked about food and all this water exercise and all these things. And uh, also the 10 minutes of the prime time upon waking up. Um, something that I do, but not every day. <laughs> so it really clicked me when you said it's very important to check what you're doing the night before in order to have that 10 minutes of prime time. So let us go to the questions. Now, uh, we have a few questions here. And um, the first one, what is healthy sleep? How should we experience this healthy sleep? And how much of this healthy sleep we should have? What is healthy sleep? How should we experience this healthy sleep? And how much of this healthy sleep should we have? I think I've probably covered that. I, maybe that came earlier on, did it, the question? Uh, it, it just came around. <laughs> no, it just okay. came. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, it's a good word, healthy sleep. So I think if you want healthy sleep, you have to li lead a healthy life. And, you know, in the way healthy life is, um, even on a physical level, you know, is... Um, the right, the right diet. Now, I don't know if many of you know, but um, something that I follow is um, a diet called eat right for your blood type. If you can find out your blood type and look up that on, you can look up on the internet and I'm an A type blood and it tells me the foods that I would be really highly beneficial for me and ones that would be okay and some to avoid. And I notice when I follow that diet it really helps my sleep. You may not be an A type, you might be an O type or AB, a, and then your diet is completely different. And sometimes it can just be the wrong, we're eating the wrong diet for us. So, um, so that is something to look in. So when we're talking about healthy sleep, healthy, healthy lifestyle, exercise, air, sunlight, you know, healthy, but also mentally healthy, you know, to clear out the clutter in our in, in, in our environment and also in our mind. I'll be healthy. And I would say, as I said, aim for six hours sleep. And if you wake up earlier than that, fantastic. <laughs> yes. So for the next question, uh, it's something related to dreams. So they're asking, uh, is having dreams normal? Though sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. And mm. uh, they mentioned something about dreams being colorful or black and white. So maybe right. you want to yeah. share. Some mm. I think people, I think everyone does dream. It's just that some remember them more than others. And um, some have very colorful dreams, very dramatic dreams. The interesting thing where I've had my most dramatic dreams are in Madaban. 
and um and i think that's maybe because you know i've let go of the world a bit and there's more relaxed and and so we can get messages from our dreams and um i quite like the the gestalt ap approach to dreams and that is that um that you are everything in the dream so the main thing of a dream is what does it make you feel what what are what is your feeling so in a dream you could um you could have a death in the dream it doesn't mean that you're going to die but maybe there's something in your life that needs to end something that's not useful anymore that needs to go out of your life or you in your in your dream you have a baby and you're a bit shocked because you're a brahmin and you're having a baby right it's not about that it's about something new there's you need to give birth to something new there's maybe there's maybe you're not living out your potential and you you need to birth something new you need to get involved in something new so um so it's about the symbolism of dreams so dreams carry our, our subconscious mind kind of works more with symbols so um you know or you might feel that you're running away and someone's on the chase after you and you're in the panic so for brahmins we might look at okay is there an aspect of ravan that I'm, I'm not coping with too well <laughs> and I feel it's you know my past is chasing after me so catching up with me so I think it's about um, symbolism and understanding the symbolism of dreams um, but some dreams are just sorting out the day they're all a muddle sorting out the day so sometimes you do have powerful dreams and there is like a message in them Relating to the dream sister, um, there's another question on how to avoid impure dreams for those who, are, who have impure dreams. Yeah, so I think it's, again, it's to look at that hour before you go to sleep, no social media, no um, going online, stop checking your emails um, and read Aviak Moli. Read Aviak Moli before you go to sleep and you'll notice a big difference in your dreams. Thank you. And uh, you talked about earlier about, uh, you know, putting phones away, the laptops and all these things. So uh, there's one question here. What's wrong with blue light and how it affects our sleep? Yes. So blue light is quite different from uh, like daylight. So in what happens is the blue light, um, it keeps us awake. So it kind of, in a way, it... Um, it inhibits the melatonin so so that's why an hour before you're going to sleep so if you know that you'll get you get you want to start going to bed at nine o'clock you want to go to bed at nine o'clock or nine thirty really just shut everything down by eight o'clock there's nothing that's so important that you have to do it's better to you know after muli class to go and do what you've got to do but you know um try and organize your life that you don't need to be online now okay if you've got a talk you have to do it yeah but still try and make the talks early early as you can you know i i don't really want to be on on at nine o'clock after nine o'clock i think you have to finish <laughs> All right. and uh, the next question sister uh, Baba often talks about being a conqueror of sleep. Can I just so what say something? Can I just put in here? If you know you're going to be up a bit later, then I suggest write your chart earlier. If you know that you're going to be on a call till nine o'clock or for whatever reason, then write your chart at five o'clock. Do your, do it earlier. Write, write to Baba earlier rather than it's, it's you finish the class, then you've got to do your, because you won't want to do it, you know? <laughs> so this one, sister, this question is relating to being a conqueror of sleep. What does Baba really mean by being a conqueror of sleep? Um, Baba wants us up for Amrit Vela. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Amrit Vela is the most important time, and Baba says, 
from two to five, that's when time for Brahmins. And after that, he has to look after the devotees and the rest of the world. So we have to work out, we may not be able to get up early. We may, I mean, Baba's, I think all BKs know that four to quarter to five is kind of essential, but I think many get up three, some get up at two, but we might not be able to get up at two all the time because we may have a whole day's work ahead of us. But there may be, say the weekend, or there may be times that we do, that we do, we can, maybe because it's more holiday time or whatever. Um, and if we are gonna go, there's this, there's this phrase, isn't it, in, in English, I think it's, they had it in India and Baba said it in the Murli recently, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. So if I wanna get up early, then I need to go to bed early. So it's about patterns really. And, but you know, if you're gonna to go to bed early, then you have to start winding down early. You have to, but probably we all know that Amrit Vela is probably the most important thing of Brahman life. That and the Murali is the most important two things. So we wanna be fresh for those. So it's working towards it and experimenting, you know, and if I'm not, if I'm sluggish in the morning, then look at my diet, look at, what I'm drinking, look at my patterns. And, and every, you know, we've got, every night we've got a chance to experiment. So uh, we can start changing something and see, okay, maybe my evening meal's too heavy. Maybe what happened if I had a lighter evening meal, what would happen? Maybe what happened, what would be it like if I just had fruit in the evening? What would be the difference? I have to experiment. And then I start to think, gosh, I slept all through the night or, I, I have felt really fresh when I woke up. So it's experimentation. Um, I guess this is our final question, sister. It's also related to dreams. So uh, sometimes when I'm stressed about with work-related issues, I experience them in my dreams too. Is that a bad sign? How to remove such work-related dreams? Yes. Um, so one thing is we want to get to the point where when we leave work and we shut the door of work, we do shut the door of work. And then it's like that's finished. Now I'm onto a different track. But because that's not always easy to do because it, there's work in its own way has a lot of issues. I would say write about it. Write about before you go to bed, write about what's happened today but not always that it's a problem and it's stressful. What am I learning? What am I learning from these souls? What am I learning from, you know, the, the, you know, the timelines? You know, what, how can I bring more knowledge, Baba's knowledge into work? How can I bring Baba more into the workplace? Because sometimes when we, you know, we leave the Murli class and it's all nice, and then we go to work and it's left, we've left Baba in the Murli class, but Baba wants to come to work with us. Baba wants to be involved. Baba wants to give vibrations to those souls at work too. So he doesn't want to be left in the Murali class. He wants to come with you and he wants to serve those souls as well through you. So it might be thinking about how can I change my whole attitude to work? Maybe not to see it as work, to see it as a service opportunity, to shift my whole attitude towards it. And these are beautiful souls who come from the soul world there too at the end of their cycles, whenever they came, they're getting near the end. I can't expect them to be perfect. You know, so it's about bringing knowledge into the workplace. And maybe I also put up a few symbols in my workplace to remind me, maybe it's even if I can't have fresh flowers, have a dried flower. So I remind, to remind myself I'm a flower. And what, am I, what fragrance am I giving out now? There was a beautiful line in yesterday's money. What fragrance, you know, just to check. What's my fragrance right now? Is it bothered? Is my fragrance calm? Is my fragrance peaceful? Is my fragrance enthusiastic? What's my fragrance? And work's a good, good chance to, to test out Baba's knowledge. So Margaret, I'm so sorry. There's still another one more question. That's Can all right. I take yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just combine this. It's about um, what's your advice to those working under shift work? And uh, is it okay to have a small nap 
after Amrit Vela or, you know, before we attend Nirli class, is it okay to have a short nap? Um, probably shift work is the most difficult on your, on your body and your, the Kakadian rhythm is the most difficult. Um, and I admire anyone who's doing shift work because it is really, really challenging. Um, so I think you just have to manage your best really. And, um, if you need to have a nap after Amrit Vela to be fresh for class, fine. So in the household that I'm in, there's some who don't go back to bed after Amrit Vela, but some who are working, they do go back to bed after Amrit Vela because some can have a nap in the afternoon, some can't. So I think it's each of us have to work out with Baba, not separate from Baba, so it's our man map, but with Baba, what is appropriate for our life. Thank you, Sister Margaret. It's such a beautiful session and I'm sure each one of us has taken great benefit from this evening session. Uh, just to let you know, uh, we had at least around 300 participants uh, connecting through Zoom. And also we are live on Facebook right now. And uh, we do have uh, souls from Apart from Malaysia, there are uh, PKs from China, Indonesia, and a uh, few more other Asian countries who are connected with us this evening. So uh, now we will have a guided meditation by Sister Margaret. So I would kindly request if uh, all of us can switch on our cameras so we can exchange Drishti with Sister Margaret for this meditation session. So first, just to make sure that the body is comfortable. And to bring yourself into this moment. It's amazing to just be aware that the past is gone. Even half an hour is gone now for 5,000 years. Even the last minute is gone now for 5,000 years. And to really bring yourself into this present moment. To see the self as that beautiful point of sparkling light that belongs to Almighty Baba and Brahma Baba. This is our self-respect. Each one of us absolutely beautiful soul that's intensely loved by both the Almighty and Brahma Baba, intensely loved. And whatever effort that we're making in our life, Baba supports that spiritual effort. He's proud of us for that effort. Each one of us specially chosen because we are contributing to creating heaven on earth. We're all part of Baba's plan. And if we can zoom out and place ourselves in the soul world, and see the whole planet from a distance. And see that yes, in the drama, we're each playing a character, as are all the souls, just a character. A 
character in a certain body costume. But from the soul world, we see that behind all those characters are absolutely beautiful souls that are part of a soul family of the soul world. And each and every soul is so precious to the Supreme Soul, part of the Supreme Soul's soul family. And this is the basis of our self-respect. We are all eternal souls. We are immortal, imperishable. There is nothing in that drama that can hurt us in any way. There's no water, no fire, no ether, no heat can touch the soul. The character and the costume, yes, but not the soul. We are forever. And as we come back into the drama and back into the character, to feel that separation, you're just playing a part. And Baba wants the soul to stay empowered whilst we're playing that part. Om Shanti. So before we end off today's session, I would like to invite Mira Didi to say a few words. And uh, we will finish off this evening session with one song meditation later on. So welcome Mira Didi. Om Shanti. <laughs> You're on mute, Sister Mira. Mira Didi, you have to unmute. Unmute. Om Shanti, Sister Margaret. Om welcome. Shanti, lovely to see you. Welcome to Malaysia. Welcome to ARC. Thank you. Everything is now virtual. <laughs> <laughs> I know Margaret for a long time. I have been sometimes participating in the training uh, she gives in ORC because we are also there simultaneously for silence retreat and uh, I have seen her being such a wonderful teacher, training souls, taking them into the depth of Raj Yoga. But not only that, but I have been to London many times and uh, I have seen her uh, role in UK and Europe service. Uh, of course, uh, Margaret is a very, very good student. <laughs> you can know from the way she has shared. Uh, something I must say that, you know, since I, have, I came to Baba, uh, the two passion I had in my life was Amrit Vela and Murli. <laughs> I was so passionate to wake up early in the morning that uh, I used to be, you know, taking the responsibility to play the Amrut Vela song. So I was greedy. I was thinking that, you know, if I take the responsibility to play Amrut Vela song, that means I can go to Baba's room to say good morning first before anybody else. <laughs> but I did not want anybody to go to Baba's room before me. So that greediness I used to take up. 
even in training in Madhuban also, I used to say, I will play the Amrit Vela song because those days it was a gramophone. So we can mm -hmm. play, you know, uh, it is a manual. And so that is how that uh, from the beginning, that passion has kept me very, very enthusiastic about drama in life. And Murli also, because during those days, we get one copy of the Murli and that only Dadi will handle. None of us will get any copy of the Murli. And so we were so curious what Baba says in today's Murli, she has to read. And that was really amazing experience. Every line, we don't know next line what it is, you know? So like nowadays, the Murli value has gone because people read Murli and come, they bring the laptop with the Murli or they will have a copy of the Murli in the hand. So that, that really, you know, God is speaking to me firsthand. That, uh, uh, you know, Gopi listening to the Murli, I remember that experience. And uh, we have to write down, we won't get a copy of the Murli for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So especially Aviat Murli, uh, we love so much. I remember when everybody goes to bed at 10 o'clock, that is the time the Murli is free, only one Murli. So I will wake up and go to a little small room and I will write down the whole Murli in a notebook for myself to read. You know, the, because those days, Murli had so much of importance, importance that you don't want to miss out a single word. But now you make copies and distribute and email. and But still, I think it is very, very important in Brahmin life, what you mentioned, these two things. And I also agree with you very much, writing the chart, that has been one of my a hobby in Brahmin life, I would say, <laughs> you know, writing chart. And I very much believe and I underline that it is very important for us to make chart our teacher so that we can look at ourselves. It's a mirror or a teacher that will tell me where I am at and what I need to do, especially nowadays. Nobody is going to tell us anything, what we do right, what we do wrong. We have to be teachers to ourselves. I would really encourage everyone to really keep it, you know, plan your day in such a way. As Margaret said, don't, uh, you know, write the chart before going to sleep so that you, you, you don't have energy to write the chart. So plan your writing the chart in, little bit advanced, give time. I, I really understand the value of giving one hour for the self before going to sleep. You know, properly writing the journal, reading Dadi's book, Avyakt Murli book, or to next day morning if you have to read the Murli, whatever. So it is very, very important. And I practice what you said, the 10 powerful thoughts uh, every morning and it definitely, definitely has a deep impact. So I think all of us who are in this class today, we make this determined thought uh, to practice this, to empower ourselves and then through our example, empower others. So for Margaret, on behalf of the Asia family, as you heard, not just Malaysia, there are several countries from Asia also participating today. So many, many thanks for you for giving your valuable time. <laughs> and when I asked her, she immediately agreed, okay. <laughs> so it was very nice of you and it was very, very useful. And I think everybody has received a lot of motivation so I think Malaysia will become Nidra Jeet, <laughs> conqueror of sleep, as Baba has said, so that Baba has to stay in Malaysia. Because if all Brahmin become Nidra Jeet, they won't allow Baba to go to sleep. 
right? Then Baba has to be awake with us. So when Baba is awake with us, we will be charged with our battery. So thank you so much. And lots of love to Jainty Ben, Maureen Ben, and all the others in London family. And I hope to see you sometime in the future also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. So oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sister Margaret, once again. And thank you, Mira Devi. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will meet again for our next monthly sustenance session next month. Thank you. Om Shanti.